Here at Calvary Chapel, we're going through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. If you want to go ahead and turn to John chapter 13. Two weeks ago, we looked at the first part of this. And in that, it was a beautiful display of the gospel. So by the way, if you need a Bible, there should be Bibles in front of you under those chair racks. If you're using a digital Bible, I'm using the New American Standard Version, probably easiest to follow along. In this thing, we saw that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And in that, we saw that it was this just beautiful, beautiful example and display of the gospel. It was a display of servant leadership, a display of God's love for humanity. Look what he says here, chapter 13, verse 4. Jesus got up from supper, laying aside his garments, taking a towel, he girded himself. And when he had poured out water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, them, he wiped them with the towel which was girded on him there. Just as we looked at this idea that as Jesus laid aside his earthly garments to serve the disciples, like Philippians says, he laid aside his glory, his station in heaven to come down and to serve us and to dwell among us. You know, in Mark, it says, "Heads with screen, this is Mark 10, 45. Jesus says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. This was the mode of Jesus. This is what he did. And so after he had served the disciples by washing their feet, we read in verse 12, it says, when he had washed their feet, he had taken his garment and he reclined at the table and he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right. For so I am. If I, then the Lord and the teacher washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. He says in verse 15, I gave you this as an example. You should do as I did. And then he says in verse 17, if you know these things, you're blessed if you do them. So the blessing comes when putting into action what Jesus taught, and what Jesus demonstrated. Let me say that again. The blessing comes into action when you put into action what Jesus taught and what Jesus demonstrated. The blessing comes when you put into action what Jesus taught and what he demonstrated. And we have his word. So when we put his word into action in our lives, this is when the blessing happens. One of the ways, you know, he, he says, and it was interesting because he talks about this example, you do them and you're blessed. And then he says down, he ends this section, verse 34. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another by this, verse 35. All men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So Jesus says that one of the ways to love one another, he says here, is to serve one another. But it's very simply. He's like, do you know what I've done to you? I've washed your feet. I've served you. And then you're blessed if you do this. And this is how people are going to know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. One of the ways that a Christian loves one another is in the way that they serve. And we talk about, you know, serving, and I'm, I'm going to put it this morning in the category of missions. And this is one of the ways that Christian serves is through missions, supporting them, going on them, being involved with them, praying for missions. Here at Calvary, we're involved in many missional works. In fact, it was awesome. We had a, I don't know if you remember, we, the missionary we supported in the Philippines, the Capones, that they were at King's Garden Orphanage there. And Jonathan Capone, he had gone around and and, um, he was getting support. And he was a missionary that was going to go out. And we had a connection through his parents here. And um, he came by here and had talked to us. And he had visited, I don't know, I don't remember how many churches. It was a lot. I mean, that guy went after it. He, Him and his wife, Phil, totally called to do this thing. And so he just went after it to all these churches. I can't remember if it was 100, if it was 60. It was a lot of churches. And he said, you know what, Shane? So interesting. He said, the churches 
that are alive are about missions. The churches that are dead have no missions in their church. And I just kind of tucked that away. Okay, Lord, we're going to be involved in missions, but we want to be alive. And so, man, it's hot. (laughs) I'm not hot. The mic's hot, but whoo. Local stuff. Local missions that we're involved in. Diversion Center. How many guys are serving the Diversion Center? A bunch of people here. Food Bank. How many guys are serving at the Food Bank weekly? Wednesday. Man, the greatest story just happened. I got to tell this. It wasn't in my notes. Um, okay. So the Food Bank is this great opportunity that we had uh, during COVID. They were looking for these drive through things. And we're like, sure, we'll help for a season. And we'll be a, dr- a drive through place. We'll put food in people's trunks. And, and then it turned out to be this really great service to the community. And, and then as you know, Linda Wright is in charge of that. And then Joanne Jurdy helps out a ton. She helps manage, helps assist Linda. And we were talking about, you know, we want this to be greater than just putting food in people's trunks. If this doesn't translate into some spiritual blessing, I don't know if I want to be involved in it. I mean, it's a good work, but we're not just to be called to be involved in social works. We're called to be involved in spiritual works. And so that's always our goal. And we have folks uh, that volunteer. They pray for the cars that come through. They invite them to things that happen to the church. They say, God bless you, you know, and all these things. Well, so two Wednesdays ago, uh, Pastor Andrew was out there. I think he had his son. Which son was it? Switching off. One of his sons there were, were uh, blowing the parking lot with a backpack blower. I think the backpack blower is about as big as his kid. And he's out there, you know, blowing the parking lot. And there are these guys that the food bank lines up and, and the line goes from the front door here to the upper room, you know, and then it goes three to five and it comes through. And these guys are in the middle of the line and they pull out of the line and they park their truck, open up the back of the truck, get out backpack blowers and they start blowing the parking lot. And we're like, oh, man, thanks. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're just so thankful for this. Uh, we're so thankful for this church, so thankful that's going on there. So and Andrew, Andrew's great evangelist, great hospitality, big gift is. He starts inviting to everything we got going on. And one of the guys, uh, he ends up, comes to the, the men's, like, prayer thing on Saturday of the day of the marriage conference. They're up there in the upper room doing the thing. He straggles down and says, what's going on? All these people are down here for the marriage conference. Oh, we're having a marriage conference. You want to hang out and stay? Sure. He hangs out and stays. Get saved. He's got a, a brand new marriage. Yeah, it, it's amazing. So food bank, thank you for helping with that. Uh, Young Life, sorry, I'm stealing Matt's time here. Uh, Young Life, Pregnancy Resource Center, Youth Dynamics, Disaster Relief Trips, by the way. Oh, I don't have time to talk about this. We have the semi truck is 70% filled. We have enough monetary donations. And so they're going to ship that uh, hurricane relief truck over to the East Coast on the 9th. And they're going to pick up a bunch of potatoes in Idaho uh, on the way, I guess. So that's happening. Thanks for being involved in that. Um, don't forget, too, sometimes we overlook the local church is vital part of the mission. This is what we're doing here on Sunday morning is missional. And, and it's part of the mission that God has called us into to make disciples uh, and reach the nation. So we're here doing it. Global missions. We're involved in stuff in the UK, Africa, Palau, Mexico, Japan, India, Russia, Philippines. I've been to every one of those places and good work's going on all around the world. And in these missions, it's the love of God being demonstrated and communicated to others. Whether we're rebuilding something or feeding someone or sharing the good news with them. You know, Paul writes about the, in the Ephesians about the purpose and the mission of the church. I quoted this earlier. This is Ephesians 3.10. Paul says, So that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. The wisdom of God be made known through the church. And then he goes on to say in that Ephesians passage, Ephesians 4.11, in the church, he said he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. And so we build up the body of Christ, the church, and then we go out, we know him, and we make him known. When Paul says the wisdom of God might be made known, he's talking about the gospel of Jesus. 
He's talking about the good news of Jesus, so that the good news of Jesus would be made known to this world. And it's definitely the goal when it comes to missions efforts. And all that to say, uh, I wanted to introduce you to our team. Uh, you see some of us in some high-vis, mint, I don't know what this is, um, shirts. This is our team that's going to Africa in January. Why don't you guys come up here? I want the whole team, come on up here. I want to introduce you to them. I want you to, yeah, you can round applause. I guess line up here on the front here. So here's the thing. We're going as an extension of you. So we're going to go to Eswatini, Africa, and Matt Rainey's here to share about that. He's going to talk about that and what the specific mission is and how it plays into this thing of the idea of to know God and to make him known. Um, but this is this team here, this is a representation of you. We're going to go to South Africa, to this little country in Eswatini, and we're going to say greetings from Calvary Chapel, Lake Stevens, Washington. God loves you. And we're going to demonstrate that in the way that we serve. So quick introduction. I'm going to just put you on the spot down here. Boom, you're on. Introduce yourself and one just thing we can pray for. And then just pass it on. Make it quick. vision and will as we pursue what he's doing, as Shane just described in Ephesians. Dan Salinas, uh, that we would all be, um, we would all be blessed to, you know, just be there and to touch people's lives and to be sensitive to those needs because there'll be things come upon us that we never expected. And yet God knows and he's prepared us and he's prepared us. even, we don't even know it yet so that we'd be ready. Michael Knutson, I echo the, um, echo the words spoken from these three, plus my, um, my hope and understanding for this mission and me being fully healed. Amen. Matthew Schissel, um, pray for the construction project we're gonna be doing and that we can decipher the mini mics. <laughs> <laughs> There's five mics. I'm Mike McAuliffe, also. <clears throat> and my prayer is, this is the first pretty much all men's mission trip. And I just want prayers that our egos be uh, left at home. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just that God will give us a good, strong purpose. I'm Joe Cunningham. Uh, I pray for unity in the group and unity with God and that uh, we would just do his work as opposed to ours. I'm Michael Linsko and I would uh, ask for prayers for safety, health, and a uh, lack of injuries. I'm Michael Stevens. I think I'm the last of the five Michaels. <laughs> 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 Pray that we can remember each other's names on the trip, but most importantly, uh, most importantly, uh, just pray that our uh, small uh, little piece that we're doing will help grow the community of uh, God in this um, this community in uh, Eswatini. My name is Griffin. I'm not a Michael, but this is my dad. Uh, I pray for health and safety, and that we can do God's good work in Eswatini. My name is Matt Rainey. Um, I would love your prayers for unity, of course, for this group of men, but also for, um, for our families that uh, stay behind, that, uh, that they would be well and strong in our absence. Yeah, that's my prayer. You just pray for my family while I'm gone. It always seems if something happens uh, whenever you're gone. Okay, there's the team. Uh, you'll be praying for us. I'm going to have Matt Rainey stay on with Adventure Soccer, and he's going to share about the specific thing that we're doing down there. So we can sit down and let get, hand it over to Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, as you can see, we've got some big problems on our hands. Um, there's some challenges deeper than, uh, deeper than the name Michael. Um, 
uh, it, it's true, this prayer for unity, it's a really big deal. Um, and it, it really draws me back to one of the songs that we were worshiping together. Um, I won't forget encountering Tingatelli in Eswatini. Um, she's one of the orphan girls that was rescued in the inner city and uh, she lives at a, at a very special place called the Sandra Lee Center. It's one of the few orphan homes in the country and those who've traveled with adventure soccer teams in the past to Eswatini know about Sandra Lee Center. Many of them write letters to the kids there and, and it's this beautiful pen pal relationship of encouragement. Well, Tengatelli was wearing a shirt and it said, Abide. And uh, that caught my attention today as we were worshiping. We were singing, teach me to abide. Well, I asked Tengatelli, did she know what that meant, the word abide? And maybe, maybe it's swirling in your mind, like, I'm, I'm, I think I know, I'm not sure. But it's, a, it's a, a, a very important and relevant term, um, not only for Tengatelli's life, and for my life, but, but for this mission. If you look it up, one of the definitions you'll see is to act or accept in accordance with blank. Well, for the believer, it's to act and accept in accordance with what the Word of God says, but with what God's will is. And as we were guiding uh, Tengatelli in this idea of what it meant to abide, and Lord, teach me to abide, it's such a rich thing to, to wrap your mind around because to abide means that when our will or our idea or our vision doesn't match up with what His will is, we have a big problem because there's a power struggle going on. There's a fight that goes on in our inner spirit, but it also manifests itself in our actions. So what do we do with that? What do we do when our will or our vision doesn't match up with His? Okay, let me make this more real for you. I want to show you a photo. Um, maybe pull up that first photo. What does that look like when a child lives in a rural village with no mom and dad in a country where they don't allow any orphanages anymore and they encourage kids to stay in their homestead that they grew up in? That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And when you have a team come into that village and run a kids rally, guess who shows up? This beautiful thing. Wow. Let's go to the next. Or you have babies carrying babies. Many of those who've traveled have encountered this group of boys where big brother carries little brother on his back and they wander to the church because they hear the sounds, they hear the singing, they, they know the smells of the food that's coming from that place. They need clean water. You know, Pastor Shane's exactly right. The, the local church is and ought to be and should be the center of the community that everyone comes to for help. Spiritual help, physical help, we meet physical needs, we need spiritual needs, we meet all of those needs. That's what these boys are doing. They're hungry. They're hungry for their only meal of the day. And praise God, guess where they came? They came to the local church. How about the next one? Beautiful children. And you know what? When we, when Jesus comes in, Joy is visibly, you can see it. You can see it in faces. Hope isn't just a fancy word. Hope is real. Hope is, hope is realizing and recognizing that you were made with a purpose. And we as the local church are going to come along your side and help you discover what that is. 
We are going to help you identify what those gifts are that are unique to you, and we're going to help grow them, help disciple them. Well, sometimes things don't go as we plan. And I think that's why that word, as Garrett and the team were, were, were leading us, I think that's why that word was screaming at me today, abide. My plans didn't line up with what appears to be God's will. And I'm still exploring as to why. This team, this team of men that is fully capable in all things construction and all things physical and all things discipling and mentoring, this team is supposed to be building our Hope of Glory Conference Center. It's, it's for Bible training for our pastors and those that are associate pastors it's to train and equip them to be able to minister rurally. That's number one for the Hope of Glory building. Number two is it's supposed to be our agriculture training. See, each of our church plants, we're, we're building and preparing them to be completely self-sustainable because those orphan children don't tithe. They don't have anything to tithe. They're actually really big takers right now because they're babies. We're supposed to be training at this Hope of Glory building on how to chicken farm, pig farm, raise crops to sell at market, cabbages and corn and all of those things. That's what the other part of that Hope of Glory building is. We're supposed to be building this for that. And finally, we're adventurous soccer. We train and equip coaches to be able to, the, the coaches that we train, it's like we're, we're doing a sports-based Awana program. So each of these villages where, where, where we plant churches, the, the kids join soccer teams, the boys and the girls. And it's actually really fun. It's super fun, but it's all grounded in growing in the Word of God. And the kids love it. They embrace it. And they gather twice a week in these villages with their coach. And we're supposed to be training them at the Hope of Glory building. The Hope of Glory building is not being built in January. We got caught up in a big mess. I was so sure, so sure that when I approached Maddie about this, I was like, this is perfect. The timing for the building, we'll have the property. We'll be able to pour the footing and foundation. This is a concrete guy. And I'm going, let's build a team around that. We're not doing that. We can't do it. Because somewhere along the line, see the way Eswatini works is the king is in charge of everything. It's an absolute monarch. They don't get to vote. They don't get to vote their convictions to help legislate what they know to be right. They're told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and how often to do it. And underneath the king are the, the chiefs, the local chiefs that govern these areas in Eswatini. Well, the local chief in the area of Madligam PC, where the Hope of Glory building, the first ever rural pastoral conference center, training center will be, the local chief got the idea that there was a promise made that a church would be built there. Now, we as Americans understand what multi-use facilities are. This turns into, a, a, I've seen it with my own eyes, turn into a, a, a place where we eat. In, and it takes about 15 minutes and boop, doors open, people are doing things, it changes. It, it becomes a kid's, I saw VBS pictures in here. This is a multi-use facility that can be used for numbers of things. The Swazis don't understand that idea. In fact, they rejected that idea I thought it was a brilliant idea. Why would we build multiple buildings for something when we could build one building and it could be used for all sorts of things? Kids rallies, church, training for chickens, goats, pigs, soccer coaches, Bible training. We could have screens and teach our pastor. We could stream things. It would be so exciting. The chief said, no, we don't do that here. 
We will not give you the property until you build a church. I don't want to build a church. I want to build a multi-use facility. Why would we build something that wasn't needed when we could just build? I think he had had about enough of our petitioning. And we were dangerously close to a line that I, I don't want to be near. So we backed off and brought it back to prayer. And when I arrived with our first training and getting to meet the team and how it had been assembled, I was actually a bit taken aback to see that it was all male. It was almost as if I felt like my face was getting smeared in the mud a little bit, like, look at this team. And what are you going to do with this now? You can't build your little building, Matt. Things weren't going according to plan. God was teaching me to abide. Is he doing the same in your world? To act and, and accept in accordance with? I bet you he is. And you know, sometimes that means setting our ideas aside and 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 first seeking what what would you have us do here god sometimes sometimes things don't go according to plan and that's okay because it's not out it first hasn't it always filters through his hands so we can trust and cling to that so what do we do well, when things don't go according to plan, my, my best advice is that you cling to the promises of God. He, he's not abandoning this mission. Actually, I think what he's doing is he's shifting it back to being in accordance with his timeline, his will, and we're going to build a church. I don't want to build a church. I want to build a multi-use facility. I even have the name picked out. We're going to build a church. You know, as you start conceding your ideas and trading them for God's will, that becomes really obvious. Some things happen. You go to prayer, you read the Word, and the Word comes alive in ways that maybe you're like, wow, this is really for me. You look for confirmations. You know, Pastor Samora, and, and maybe we could jump to that photo, because I want you to, to meet Pastor Samora, who's, who's the pastor in this, this church in Madligan PC. And here we are standing in the chicken house. Um, it's a layer house, and this, this floor of this layer house was put in by the last Calvary team that, that was, uh, was in Eswatini. And it's going to be the business that keeps this, this uh, ministry in Madligan PC going for Pastor Samora, his wife, and his family. We've held many a kid rally in here. We've had an incredible time of worship and Sunday services. We are targeting orphans and vulnerable children that flow walk to this church and they overwhelm it. 85% of the attendees of this church are children under the age of 12. They're bursting at the seams in the chicken house. Church in a chicken house, how fun is that? It's going to become a layer house at some point after the Hope of Glory building was built, but now we can't wait we can't wait any longer. And I'm starting to see what God's doing in the middle of this. We can't wait. Why can't we wait? Because we have no revenue source, no income source for ministry without this chicken house being opened. They can't sell the eggs. They can't raise the meat. They can't do all those things that are their revenue because they meet in church there. And this is a really special... Sometimes God does things that you're not planning for. We were in there... About to have PTSD team members that were with us. Sorry. We're, our target is orphans and vulnerable children. We'll put up with the men and women. <laughs> but that's not our target. And there's frankly, there's not that many of them. 
There's more kids. HIV has devastated this culture, this country. Well, across the street from this chicken house is a witch doctor. And ancestral worship and, and those sorts of practices are, are deeply entrenched into this culture um, where it's actually blended with the Word of God. Uh, the, the word we would use in, in ministry is it's, it's, it's syncretism. It's a blend of cultural practices and the Word of God. We do the same thing here. It just looks different. But when you blend ancestral worship and, and the practices of witch doctors, which is really dark and ugly, um, when someone comes to Christ, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that happened. Somebody wandered over to the church. Our team happened to be there. I thought I have everything nice and neat and tidy where everything was going to go just as everybody dreamed. And all of the yucky demons came out of this woman. And I remember you, Chrissy. I remember you going over to try and pray over her. And it was the ugliest, darkest thing I'd ever seen as all that yucky stuff came out. God's winning the war in Madlegan PC. God's taking back ground that he wants. And man, do I feel privileged to be a part of it. We want to build a church right there so even more can come to hear about the saving faith in Jesus. We didn't plan for it. We didn't budget for the $10,000 that we need. But you know what? I started looking for confirmation. Pastor Samora, he threw a concert there. He called um, No Sound System, just 12 of his best African singers, and they did a concert. And you know what? They raised 500 bucks. And I told him, I said, I'll match that. And so we matched that money. And by the next time I got on the ground, he already had the footing and the foundation dug out, and he used that money to pour it. And I said, what are you doing? We're building the Hope of Glory building right there on that property after the chief gives it to us. He's like... I don't think so. I think, we're, I think we're supposed to build a church. You know, when we abide in Him, when we, when we get ourselves accepting or acting in accordance with God's will, He will give us confirmations. I've accepted and received that, that we are to build this church. And we're already $2,000 towards that $10,000. I'm trusting God's going to do it. Because more need to hear about Jesus. More need that yucky stuff replaced with the hope and promises of who he is. Would you not let your guard down in praying for us? I just gave you a glimpse of what the front lines out in the mission field look like. They look different than the parking lot here. They're both victories they're both kingdom focused and the mission doesn't change whether we're meeting people out in the parking lot or we're flying halfway across the world to eswatini it's to reach the people with the message of hope and we know what that hope is it's jesus would you pray with me today father in heaven i pray that you would help us to wrap our minds around the ways that you're at work using us, your children, for your purposes. You don't have to. You could have done this without us. But you allow us to participate in the work that you're doing. The work you're doing in our neighborhoods. The work you're doing in our community. The work you're doing in the Philippines, the work you're doing in Africa and all around the world. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to participate. I pray that we could accept and act in accordance with your will, your wishes, your desires. Teach us, Lord, to abide in you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, Chelsea, I was going to ask you a quick question. You're running out the door. I'm going to make the puns. So we can do the that's what I was going to ask her. See, that's why she's the admin right there. Um, so, yeah, when Matt and I met, this is, I don't know, it's a couple of months now, um, he was sharing about this and, and kind of like getting to this idea that we need to build a church and we don't have the funds for it. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, build a church, you know, I know what it costs to build a house, I know what it costs to build this place. And so I'm thinking, okay, how, how much are you talking? He's like, ah, it's gonna be 10,000. And I just like laughed, <laughs> like 10,000 to build a church? Done, let's do it. So there's already two there, there's eight to go. If you'd love to partner with us, that'd be awesome. Uh, the way to do it online, you give it in the box. Um, and we've got two months to do it, and uh, looking forward to doing that. And you can be praying for us as we prepare uh, for that. And uh, anyways, great. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your Sunday. <laughs>